Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to uh, this Wednesday, the 10th of April. Hope you're doing well. We'll talk about inflation here in just a few minutes when Dave joins us. But remember, in this world we live in, there are so many things that are out of our control. The amount of risk in your portfolio is in your control. You just need to know what that risk is and what that risk should be based on your current circumstances. Give me a call at 863 382 0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. With that, we got Dave coming up next. 5.7 Highlands Light FM. It's a manic Monday, and it looks like it's going to be kind of a manic Wednesday on Wall Street, too. Uh, let's uh, check in and see why. We got the numbers, and we ain't going necessarily like them. Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring is. On the phone, ready and raring to give us the only news. Philip, good morning. How are you today? Hey, good morning, Dave. I'm doing well, but the market's not so much after the CPI number came out at 830 this morning. Oh, goody. Uh, to, to set the table for the morning, yesterday was another kind of hold steady day, pretty much what we kind of expected. Blue chips on the Dow and the S&P were $9 south of the zero mark on the Dow, $7.5 north of the zero mark on the S&P. In other words, they went nowhere. Uh, the NASDAQ was down, was up by 53 points, which is a measurable move, but in the context of uh, in the context of the moves that we see in the size of the numbers, it was it was a hold steady day on balance, primarily because everybody was sitting back and saying, "What are we going to get for an inflation rate?" And then at 8:30, it dropped four tenths of a percent CPI increase last month, makes it the biggest year over year bounce since last September, and I'm just guessing the markets were unimpressed. They uh, that would be putting it lightly, Dave. They were highly upset. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're seeing. I mean, the the Dow immediately dropped like three, four hundred points. So um, just to give you an idea, we are in solid red territory this morning by over one percent negative in all indexes. Um, right now, the Russell two thousand is down three and a quarter percent. <laughs> Uh, to give you an idea of how touchy the market is, expectations, we got four-tenths of a percent. Expectations were only three-tenths of a percent. If we were just a little bit more confident, a little bit more steady-handed, that would be a near miss. But, boy, are they hacked off, aren't they? They, they, they really are, Dave. And, and I think mostly because the year-over-year -year number becomes the worst one we since, have seen since September of last year. Yeah, I was going to say that 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 was what I caught the worst number since last year. And it, oh lordy, inflation ain't tamed yet. Yeah, my delayed quotes just came up, and it looks like somebody uh, somebody broke their knee all of a sudden <laughs> right about the time those numbers came out. The uh, the charts are not pleasant by any way, manner, or form. And uh, uh, not sure what you know. I mean, you know, we were using the phrase touchy, touchy, touchy on the markets lately, and that really does end up doing it. We don't have a core number quite yet, and the core number is more accurately what the, uh, what the Federal Reserve looks at on, you know, PCE core, but they still look at the core numbers. I had, an, I had two items that came out kind of, uh, kind of uh, bouncing off of this. I saw a headline go by and said, the J.P. Morgan economists were saying, no, 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 the Fed's got it all wrong. They need to reduce interest rates in order to control inflation. And I, as soon as I went WTF after looking that, I found a chart. Core services are the part that are really killing the, cons the consumer price index. The rest of the elements of it are okay. They're going down. But core services, which just happens to include housing and your mortgage payment, uh, they've been steadily high. So Maybe you and I need to rethink a little bit. Maybe a quarter point might help inflation. That's kind of reverse psychology, but it actually made a little bit of sense. If we dropped housing prices a little bit on a month-to-month -month basis, it might actually help. I mean, I guess it could from that standpoint, that number standpoint. But, uh, you know, still, I think that we're getting into that situation where, I mean, the other thing is that mortgage applications actually increased for refinances last month. Um, or last week. And so I find that interesting as well. Interest rates are ticking up this morning. We've got the 30-year Treasury at almost 4.6% this morning. 
Yeah, I was going to say, looking at the uh, inter- looking at the bond yields, I'm saying it doesn't look like the market is expecting a lot of interest rate decreases. As a matter of fact, the curve looks like they're actually expecting an increase. That's right, they do. And and you got to think that the numbers we've got today, I mean, we do still have more numbers to come that the Fed will look at and you know, PPI tomorrow. Uh, but and those are important numbers. We don't get the real number that uh, the Fed likes for a little while yet. I don't even show it on my thing for uh, next PC- week. So. PCE numbers generally come out in like the third or the fourth week of the month in the Fed meeting for the interest rate set. Next one is set for April 30th and May 1st, if memory serves. So the, that PCE number that I suspect will probably come out on like the 24th, it's going to be a market mover that is going to make the CPI look like a uh, hiccup, isn't it? I, I, it will. If, if it's showing the same thing, that, that inflation is actually ticking up, it won't be a pretty day. Uh, probably not. Yeah, I just, I just I, not, not, that, like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate with that uh, J.P. Morgan economist, but he actually makes it an interesting argument anyway that if we reduce the cost of housing, then the possibility of the overall inflation rate decreasing might actually happen because, uh, well, I'm looking at those core services, and shelter is far and away the single biggest number that keeps going up on the on the CPI overall. I kind of wonder whether or not the boys got a point that uh, kind of goes against my instinctive tight money instincts. Yeah, and if, if memory serves me right, the PCE doesn't have quite as large of a chunk of housing, if if I if I remember right. I remember the percentages when we talked about it last month. That includes housing in both, but the percentage of the housing expenditure in the in the core is lower than the overall, if memory serves. That's why the core looks like it's so well under control in the PCE, but the overall PCE inflation rate very often is an unpleasant surprise. Gotcha. Okay. I got so, I got no idea how they do the math on that darn thing. I just try to re- retain in memory what the Sam Hill, the geeks with the green eye shades, are doing. <laughs> earnings season is beginning at the end of this week with the big banks, and we kind of get a soft opening to earnings season with Delta Airlines. Are they going to give us anything to give any cheer about this quarter, Philip? Well, you know, Delta had a a really good quarter. When we dig down in, they uh, they beat on earnings. Uh, they came in at like uh, 45 cents a share. That was nine cents better than expected. Now, revenue was just a tad short of their expectations. But uh, I think probably more importantly is uh, year over year quarterly number. If you compare the same quarter a year ago, they actually lost $363 million or 57 cents a share. So a huge improvement uh, year over year for the quarter. And they came out with decent guidance for the second quarter, thinking that they're going to make somewhere between 220 and 250 a share, uh, which is within the range of what the uh, analysts were expecting. So, you know, they're doing all right this morning. They're actually on the green side still right now, up 3.7 percent. Being green sounds like an accomplishment this morning at this moment in time, isn't it? It, it does, based on what we're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Any other indications? Yes, yeah, and Macy's is about to add two uh, new nominees to their board. They're shuffling their board after they shed off that notion of private uh, privatizing the company. That's about the only tidbit I've got of any grandiose interest that floats out this morning. Any any other tidbits we ought to be watching today? No, I don't really see anything other than I saw that Nvidia is actually in a correction mode right now, um, down ten percent from its all time high. Yeah. I feel so. Yeah, they're they're only up four hundred percent from what they were a year and a half ago, right? <laughs> Somewhere that ballpark. <laughs> I got I got very little sympathy for people that got fat on bubble stocks. <laughs> resetting the resetting the table. It was pretty much on net net a hold steady day yesterday. Waiting for this morning, and they didn't like this morning. So let's give them the bad news. Forty five minutes before the real money gets thrown around. What are we looking at? Hey, we're seeing a little bit of an improvement, but. Not much. The Dow is down one, not quite, almost 1.1%, $414 $1. 1 on the futures. S&P 500 is down one and a quarter, that's $64 down. NASDAQ 100 down uh, one and a third, that's $242. Russell 2000 has improved drastically. It's, it's only down 2.7% right now at $56. So, um, well, Thank heavens for small favors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the other side of the coin, silver is still growing. 
up another almost seven tenths of a percent to twenty eight dollars and twenty cents an ounce. Uh, gold's uh, just up a tad, and then crude oil up forty five basis points, almost a half a percent, eighty five dollars and sixty cents a barrel right now. But eighty five sixty is better than the eighty six range it was in yesterday. I'll take any improvement I can get. <laughs> Overseas markets, uh, Asian Rim was not impressed with our hold steady overnight. They closed at 6 a.m. The Chinese mainland markets uh, were not happy with the economic news coming out of mainland China. They were down markedly, which kind of dragged the entire Asian Rim into modest red ink this morning on balance at the end. European markets haven't yet responded to our inflation report and our reaction to that. They're mostly up midway through their day, not by much, but we're talking 15 hundredths of a point up on balance across the European markets. If inflation scares you enough to be able to make the Dow drop 400 points in about five minutes, well, you might have too much risk in your portfolio. That might be a clue. Philip, how do I get the risk out of mine? Dave, that's exactly why we developed the core retirement design. Give me a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. And then join us this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And we'll tell you how bad the bloodbath was if there is one tomorrow morning, same time here on Light FM. Fair enough? Fair enough, buddy. Have a great day. You too, sir. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. Do you actually? Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Take care now.